Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we are finally getting our first proper look at MSI's new X570 Tomahawk motherboard. And as you guys probably know, I've been very keen to test this thing out for many months now. And this is a very important motherboard for MSI. Not only does it mark the next step in their X570 Redemption Tour, but at $200 US, it's a board I suspect many of you will be very interested in. Up until now, the $200 option from MSI has been their X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, a board that failed our Ryzen 9 3900X VRM stress test, a test that I might add no other board failed at any price point. Those of you who have been following our X570 VRM thermal testing will know what I think of MSI's A Pro, Gaming Edge, Gaming Plus, and Gaming Pro Carbon. In terms of VRM performance, they're all very poor. Admitting they needed to do better, MSI first started by rehashing their $370 Ace Gaming as the $300 Unify, stripping away the RGB lighting for a no frills affair. The X570 Unify is a great quality board, but at $300 it's still out of reach for many. And this is where the X570 Tomahawk comes in. At $200 it's going head to head with popular X570 motherboards such as the ASUS Tough Gaming Plus, Gigabyte Aorus Elite, and ASRock Steel Legend. Moreover, it will be replacing the horrible Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, a board I really hope MSI finally discontinues, along with a few others, including the X570 Pro Carbon. As usual, this won't be a full motherboard review. The focus here will be primarily on VRM thermal performance, as the VRM is a key feature of any motherboard, and it's not something that can be upgraded. Well, not easily anyway, unless you're Buildzoid and you can mod the hell out of it. Now, before we jump into the VRM stuff, I will just note that the Tomahawk does offer some new features over the gaming edge, such as 2.5 gigabit networking, an additional USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, and the Wi-Fi has been upgraded to Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX200 with Bluetooth 5.0. Other than that, though, they are very similar in terms of features and design, VRM excluded, of course. So that being the case, let's move on to talk about the VRM configuration. Actually, before we do, here's a gaming edge Wi-Fi refresher. For this board, MSI used the Infineon IR35201 controller, and from it they took four signals for the vCore portion of the VRM, and then they doubled each signal using an IR3598 phase doubler. This gave the Gaming Edge an eight-phase vCore VRM, and each phase packed a single on-semiconductor 4C029 MOSFET on the high side, with an on-semiconductor 4C024 MOSFET on the low side. Now we have the X570 Tomahawk, and it uses the ISL69247 controller, and from it six signals are taken for the vCore portion of the VRM, and then doubled using ISL6617 phase doublers. Those 12 phases are then connected to the stars of the show, a dozen ISL99360 60 amp power stages. By default, MSI uses a 500kHz CPU switching frequency for both boards, and Buildzoid from Actually Hardcore Overclocking calculates that at 1.2 volts with a 200 amp draw, the Gaming Edge VRM puts out 46 watts of heat, and that would explain why these boards run so hot, given a 3950X will pull around 170 to 190 amps with PBO enabled. Then Buildzoid also calculates that the new Tomahawk will generate just 17 watts of heat under the exact same conditions. That's just over a 60% reduction in thermal output. As for the ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus and Gigabyte Aorus Elite, those boards use a dozen Vachet SIC 639 50 amp power stages, which are basic DRMOS components with basically no current or temperature monitoring. The smart power stages used by the Tomahawk feature both current and temperature monitoring, and then of course they're rated for 60 amps, so will support higher currents. As for the cooler, the Tomahawk features a very similar heatsink design to that of the Gaming Edge. There's very little difference between the two, but it was never the heatsink that was a letdown on the Gaming Edge, rather it was the junk under it. So on paper, the X570 Tomahawk looks great, and there's no reason why this shouldn't be by far the best $200 AM4 motherboard, period. That said, let's move on to the testing. For load testing, we're running the Blender Gooseberry workload for an hour, and all testing has been conducted on an open air test bench with no direct airflow. Now, normally we also like to test inside a PC case to sort of replicate what would be a more real world scenario, but with the X570 testing, I skipped that for what I thought would be our initial testing of over 20 motherboards, because I thought we'd have to do all 20 motherboards all over again inside a case with the 3950X. As it turns out, once we got the 3950X, it uses about the same amount of power as a 3900X, so a retest wasn't warranted. 
To record temperatures, I'm using a digital thermometer with K-type thermocouples, and I'm reporting the peak MOSFET surface temperature, as well as the rear PCB temperature. For the MOSFETs, this means I'm measuring the temperature directly on top of the component, between it and the thermal pad, and not the internal temperature, which is bound to be a little bit higher. Still, with all boards tested under the exact same conditions, this will give us a clear picture of how the Varum temperatures compare. Finally, I will just add that I'm not reporting delta T over ambient, instead I'm maintaining a room temperature of 21 degrees, and I have a thermocouple sitting next to the test system monitoring that temperature at all times. Okay, so here's our first set of results using the Ryzen 9 3900X with PBO Plus Auto OC enabled in the Ryzen Master software. And after an hour long stress test, the X570 Tomahawk peaked at just 58 degrees, which is an incredible result. That's basically the kind of performance you can expect to see from the very best and most expensive X570 motherboards. In fact, it's three degrees cooler on the MOSFET when compared to the ASUS HERO, a board that costs twice as much. It's also able to match MSI's own $700 godlike. Basically, it's just two to three degrees warmer than the very best X570 boards. Then when compared to the Gaming Edge, the board the Tomahawk should be replacing, we see a 48 degree drop in PCB temperature. It's also 15 degrees cooler than the Tough Gaming and five degrees cooler than the Aorus Elite, which performs very well under this load. Moving on to overclocked results with the 3900X at 4.3 gigahertz using 1.4 volts. Previously, we found the Gaming Edge, the A Pro and the Gaming Pro Carbon all failed this test. And the same would also apply to the Gaming Plus, but we, we didn't test that one, but it does have the same VRM. And the VRM on all those boards got far too hot in this test, and as a result, the 3900X began to throttle. And as you can see, the temperatures at which these boards throttled were all quite different. Interestingly, the most high end of all these boards, the Gaming Pro Carbon, that didn't even hit 100 degrees. And that particular board failed this test in under five minutes. The X570 Tomahawk, on the other hand, maxed out at just 62 degrees, a mere four degree increase from the PBO test. This meant the Tomahawk was a degree cooler than the Unify when comparing the driver temperatures, and three degrees cooler when comparing the PCB temperature. It also meant that the Tomahawk was just four to five degrees warmer than the very best X570 boards. So that is obviously an amazing achievement for a board said to cost just $200. It's also a significant improvement over the ASUS Tough Gaming, lowering the PCB temperature by an incredible 16 degrees, and that also meant the Tomahawk was 25 degrees cooler than the Gigabyte Aorus Elite, which again, is just amazing stuff. I believe the Aorus Elite cooler just can't handle the thermal output as well as the Tough cooler can in this test, which is why it performs so much worse than what we saw in the PBO testing. Therefore, some direct airflow would likely bring these boards closer together. Moving past the ASUS and Gigabyte boards, perhaps the most important thing of all is the 63 degree drop in temperature, PCB temperature, from the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. I mean, what can you really say about that? The Tomahawk halves the operating temperature of the Gaming Edge. That's just insane. And finally, here's a look at the Tomahawk versus its direct competitors at the $200 price point, along with the flagship models from ASRock, ASUS, Gigabyte, and MSI for reference. This paints a pretty clear picture of just how good the Tomahawk is. We're getting flagship Varum thermal performance for $200. And as good as the ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus is, it simply can't compete with the Tomahawk. It's just a shame we had to wait almost a year to get a good MSI X570 board that doesn't cost $300 or more. Well, there you have it. MSI's new Tomahawk is without question the most impressive X570 motherboard that I've tested to date. And like I said, it's a bit of a shame that we had to wait so long. And it's a real shame that MSI didn't get it right the first time. But so far the do-over at each price point has been class leading. For example, Unify offered the best VR and performance of any X570 motherboard at its $300 price tier, but quite humorously, the Tomahawk has gone and done one better. In fact, there's really no beating the Tomahawk in terms of VRM thermal performance, unless you want to spend like $700 on one of those extreme high-end boards, but even then, we're only talking about an improvement of a few degrees. That being the case, I think it's fair to say the Tomahawk's VRM is actually overkill, which I certainly don't have a problem with, but once you start pushing below 90 degrees in our 4.3 GHz OC test, for the vast majority of you, it really doesn't matter. For example, all sub 90 degree boards will work just fine with an overclocked Ryzen 9 3950X, even in hot environments, and especially if you're just gaming. So whether you buy the X570 Tomahawk, the Tough Gaming, the Aorus Elite, or really even the Steel Legend, it doesn't matter too much, all will work just fine with any high-end AM4 processor. That said, if you're really keen on overclocking, the Tomahawk will be the way to go, 
And really there is no reason not to purchase it over any of the boards just mentioned, given it offers all the same features, or in many cases, better features. I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you already own, say, the ASRock X570 Steel Legend, for example, don't go kicking yourself. It's not a bad board and your upgrade path isn't limited. But today there is no way you'd buy a Steel Legend for $200. The Tomahawk is simply a much better deal. And I have seen the Steel Legend Wi-Fi on sale for $190, but even then just $10 off doesn't make it a worthy buy in my opinion. The ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi has also been selling at $190, and it's been our go-to choice for almost a year now. Again, the Tomahawk was 16 degrees cooler in our OC testing, but with the Tough peaking at just 78 degrees, there's no way you're going to run into any VRM issues with that board. But for $10 more, you do get a much higher quality VRM with the Tomahawk, plus better wired and wireless networking. So in short, if you're buying an X570 motherboard today and you have the Tomahawk available at $200, that's the obvious choice, unless the ASRock, ASUS or Gigabyte alternatives are on sale at a much lower price. The Tomahawk also obliterates MSI's own X570 Gaming Pro Carbon Wi-Fi. Basically, the only advantage that board has is PCIe Gen 4 bandwidth for both M.2 slots, but Beyond that, the Tomahawk really is better in every conceivable way. And obviously there's no comparison to be made when it comes to the VRM quality. And for crying out loud MSI, please discontinue the bloody Pro Carbon already. It's, it's an embarrassing motherboard, get rid of it. Anyway, the X570 Tomahawk looks to be the new go-to X570 motherboard and certainly the best offering at the $200 price point. Now we just need to see it go on sale for that price and MSI can claim their long awaited victory. It does sound like the Tomahawk will be available early next month, so fingers crossed that happens. And that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that look at MSI's Tomahawk. And if you did, do one of those for us. You can also subscribe for more content. We do this VRM testing from time to time. We're hoping to look at pretty much all of the uh, Z490 motherboards that will be coming up soon, and then of course B550, so there'll be plenty more of this type of testing coming up over the next few months. Uh, also, we have our new meme merch, which will be available for a little over a week, so probably by the time you watch this video, nine days or something like that remaining to get your order in. So we have Harbour Boxed and Hammer On Boxed. That's the new meme merch. It's pretty cool stuff and it is selling really well. So yeah, if you're interested, make sure you get in on this limited time offer. Uh, also, we have Patreon. A lot of our Patreon members, or well, all of our Patreon members support content just like this. So thanks guys. Much appreciated the support. It helps us justify doing this testing. And we have a Patreon exclusive Discord server where you can jump over there and chat with all the awesome members in the Harbour Unbox community, as well as Tim and myself. We have a live stream, which is coming up next week. Q&As, behind the scenes stuff. But yeah, if you're interested, only if you are interested, of course. And I think that's everything. I think, I think that's it. I, nothing else? No, I think we covered everything. So thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.